everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now the soap I'm making today is not one that I've designed myself. I have unashamedly stolen it from someone else. Well, stealing probably could be a bit of a strong word for it. Um, this was a soap that was actually made by Whitney from Cheeky Goat Soapery. And I saw her video and I thought, oh, I really loved that design. So I actually contacted Wit and asked if she minded if I made a similar soap to hers that I could put in my shop. And then we had a little discussion and then we said, yeah, I'll make a video as well. And hopefully I can link my video to her original video and you can all go and see Whitney's original soap. The colours I'm using today are Lime and Purple Heart, both from You Make It Up. And then I'm also going to be using some Red Riot, and that's from Micah Mama. And then finally, some oil dispersible titanium dioxide. As I start preparing for my soap, I'll get everything that I need ready and gathered together on a little tray ready for my pour. Now all my micas are measured out exactly, obviously if you don't have to deal with such strict regulations you might just have your little pots of micas on there and you can work out how much you want to use as you're going through. I've weighed out my fragrance oil and that's on my tray as well and today I'm using black plum and rhubarb from Candle Shack. This is a really nice fragrance, it holds its scent really nicely in cold processed soap and also it soaps really well and doesn't accelerate trace. I've also got some little squares of baking paper and part of the green mica that I'm going to save later until I need it for my piping. And then I'll pre-disperse all of my micas in some oil. Now I use the oils from my batch recipe just because again that then fits in with my assessment but you can use any lightweight oil or oils from your batch, it really doesn't matter. If you use extra oil that will just add to your super fat. And I always like to pre-disperse my micas because that means I can then just hand stir them into my batter once I've got to emulsion rather than having to blend them in. Which for a technique that needs a nice thin trace, that's important to do as little blending as possible after you've reached emulsion. In the original soap, Whitney did a wood grain technique and then piped her flowers on the top. I'm not actually doing a wood grain in mine just because I don't have the colours available to me in an assessment to actually make a wood grain soap. But I am going to do a thin line soap. What's the difference between a wood grain and a thin line soap? Well, basically nothing really. Um, I'm just not using wood coloured micas to make it look like wood. And also as I do my pour, I'm not going to wiggle my pot around to try and make sort of the knots and things appear in the soap. I'm just going to literally pour it so I get lots of nice thin straightish lines. So I've got my melted oils and I've added my lye solution. I always tend to soak between 80 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't tend to soak higher than that because that accelerates your trace and I don't tend to soak lower either. A couple of reasons I don't soak lower, so I don't soak at room temperature, is firstly, it can give my recipe a false trace. And then especially for a batter where I want to have a very thin trace throughout the pour, the last thing I need to be doing is sorting out a false trace to start with and the extra mixing that that involves. So I want to avoid that. And secondly, to avoid steric spots. If you start soaping low, then you can get steric spots. You know there's white blobs that appear in your soap. So just keeping that temperature raised a little bit can make sure that you don't get those. So once I'm pretty well at emulsion, I'm just going to divide my batter out. As I divide my soap batter out, I am actually putting some extra soap batter in for the red colour and the purple colour. And that's going to be two little bits of soap that I'm going to put to the side and leave those to just set up a bit because I'm going to be using those for some piping of my roses after I've poured my soap. 
I do want to have white for one of my colours, but I am first going to use some of my titanium dioxide to adjust the colouring in the other colours because I don't want them to be shouting out as red and purples. I want them to be a little bit more subdued. Not quite pastel, but um, not too bright. And then adding in my pre-measured fragrance oil. Now I'm not going to bother to weigh each individual little bit and put it on the scales. Remember I need to keep my trace really nice and thin. So I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. So as long as I get this pretty even, that's going to be fine. And then as soon as you've divided it out, remember you want to, as quickly as possible, give each little pot a stir and get that fragrance oil starting to mix in. Don't just leave your fragrance oil sitting there on top of a piece of soap batter. Often you see people doing that and then they sort of say something like, oh, my fragrance oil has riced. Well, it hasn't. All it's done is you've left a concentrated blob of fragrance oil sitting on top of your soap batter. So obviously it's going to do something weird to that bit of soap batter. So give each one a little mix and then go back and mix them more thoroughly. Now I'm not saying this is going to stop ricing, but what it is going to do is stop false ricing. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a proper term or anything. Um, but yeah, it stops you thinking you've had ricing when you haven't, because all you've done is you've just let your fragrance oil congeal with your soap a bit. Now there are several ways that you can pour a thin lines design or a wood grain soap. I'm going to do it by pouring in little bits of soap batter into the jug all at the same time. Now why you want to do little bits of the pour is because we want to have lots of these lines, all the colours of all the lines going all the way through the soap. If you were going to pour all of your pink in then all of your green in and then all of your white, for example, all in just big dollops, you would end up with more of a sort of one pot wonder effect where you have a block of colour and then the lines coming in between that and the next colour and then another block and then the lines coming in. So it's a different effect. So because we want the colours all the way through the soap, we're having to pour in little bits into our jug. Now trace is important in this technique. This is why that I initially stopped mixing barely at emulsion because I still had to muck around and do my colours and I still want just a very light trace as I'm pouring into my jug here. As soon as you allow your trace to thicken up then you're not going to get the lovely thin lines as you pour it into your soap mould. Now I'm not going to be completely emptying out these little pouring jugs. I've deliberately made a little bit of extra batter so I can make some samples as well. So as we finish our pour into our main jug, it does look super cool. Let's just stop for a minute. Have a think, what could possibly be wrong with this situation here? Now I know at least one person is going to have got the answer to that. <laughs> Poor old Whip from Cheeky Goat Soapery. I know in the past I have had a little poke at her and said, if you didn't fill your jugs up so much, you wouldn't spill your soap batter everywhere. <laughs> oh, when it comes back to bite you. Lisa, you really should know better. Come on, let's have a look at this mess then. Okay, so here's me realising that there is no way I'm going to be able to tip this jug over with it on the work surface. So I'm having to pick the mould up and pour with the mould in my hand and a lot of it down the side of my mould and straight onto the table. 
Anyway, the idea here is that you're moving your jug quite quickly along the sides of your mould. Ideally, aiming inside your mould is always preferable. And as you wipe your jug along, you're going to be creating those thin lines throughout the soap. Now, if you wanted a wood grain, you would stop every now and again and just wiggle your jug a little bit to create the knots in the wood. At this point, I think I'm still unaware about the amount of soap I've poured on the outside of my soap mould. And <laughs> there it is. OK, so I've had a little bit of a clean up and remember that little bit of spare batter I was leaving for my samples? What I've done is I've done a mini pour into one of my jugs just to top up and make up for that batter that I spilt on the table. There's nothing wrong with the batter I spilt on the table. My table was all lovely and clean before I started the pour. It's just that I want to have my nice straight lines throughout my soap. So therefore, by starting with this fresher batter, I can keep that pattern going. And that stuff that I chucked all over the table, that's fine. It'll still have a nice swirl in it. And that's what I'll use for my little samples. Then I'll just cover my soap. I tend to like to put a little bit of cling wrap between my lid and my mould just to get the best airtight seal as possible. So here I'm just using a bit of previously used cling wrap. I tend nowadays to not use rubbing alcohol at all. I just find keeping the air off of the soap for me works so much better. Now, that won't necessarily work for everyone. If you live in a humid environment, you're likely to have to battle soda ash more than I do. So if you remember earlier, I split off a little bit of my red and my purple soap batter and left them on the side. And that was just to set them up so I could use them for my piping. Now, I actually want to mix these together so I get a nice sort of magenta -y type colour for my rose. So I'm just going to mix them together and then fill my piping bag and then we'll look at piping some roses. I'm using a Wilton 103 piping tip and just stretching my bag over a glass to make it easier to fill. Now this piping bag is technically one of those disposable piping bags, but remember just because something says disposable, it doesn't mean you have to dispose of it every single time. I just use my piping bags again and again and again until they wear out. So let's look at making a little rosebud first of all. So take your icing pin and pop a little blob of soap batter in the middle. And then holding your tip with the fat part at the bottom, you want to twist the pin while squeezing the icing bag to go round the blob that you've made. Do that a couple of times to start making your bud. Then to finish off your bud, put your tip sort of more horizontal on the icing pin and then drag it over the piping that you've already done to create this closed bud effect. So if we have a look at that again, a little blob in the middle and then twist your pin with the fat bit of the piping tip to the base to go round the first bit of the piping, then lay flat and drag over the top and just keep doing that until you've made your bud as big as you want it to be. And then for our full rose flower, start in exactly the same way as if you're doing a bud, so a blob in the middle and then go round the blob by twisting your pin a couple of times. Now the difference here is rather than dragging over the bud that you've made, you're going to allow the top of your piping tip to lean away from the centre. 
Now, what I like to do with mine as well is give it a little wiggle as you're piping so that you get that sort of almost fluted wavy effect that you get with the roses. And again, just carry on until your rose is the size that you want. OK, so we'll just do one more to finish off. Again, a blob in the middle and start it off like your bud and go round that blob a couple of times. And then you can start to build up your leaves by tipping the top of your tip away from the bud. And as I said before, I like to just give mine a little bit of a wiggle to just add a little bit of sort of a ripple to those rose leaves. Okay, so on to the next day and our soap's ready to cut. Now, if you wanted to add roses to a wet soap, you could do that perfectly well. It would have just meant that you would have either piped them straight onto the soap, which is a bit tricky, or you would have piped them before you made the soap and let them set up. I actually want these roses onto the cut soap just so I can have them going down the side of the soap bars rather than just on the top. What I have done before cutting this loaf now is I've already made up some green soap piping. Remember that green I saved yesterday, that mica? I've made that up and that's setting up into some piping for me. So I'm going to cut my loaf and I want to cut it and then get piped on it as soon as possible. Now for my loaf, I want to show the straight lines going through the soap. So therefore, I want to cut it lengthways rather than vertically through the loaf. If you cut it vertically, you can have sort of like loops and curves going through. I want straight lines. So as you can see here, I'm taking the length of my loaf. I've just marked it out and now I'm dividing it into three parts to get my three bars. And here you can see what it would have looked like if you cut it normally. It's Pretty cool, but it's not what we want for this soap. So for the rest of my cut, as long as I cut along with the lines, then I'm going to get the straight lines in my soap. So cut with the lines rather than against them to get the straight line design. So I'm just taking each of these blocks in turn and cutting them down the middle. So I'm staying with the direction of the lines. And then at this point, because I want a sort of chunkier, fatter bar rather than the standard sort of one inch wide, because I want my roses and everything on the top, I'm going to cut down this way rather than across to get the thinner bar. So they're all my lovely thin lines that I wanted and I'll just repeat those for the other blocks. And then because I'm going to be piping on these soaps, so essentially I don't really want to do anything after the piping, I'm going to go through with my vegetable peeler and just bevel the edges first now and then I can pipe afterwards. And then I've just filled up my piping bag with my green piping that I made a little while ago. And I've got a standard leaf tip, you know, the one that looks like a little beak in the end of this piping bag. And then here are my roses that I piped yesterday. Anything I tend to make the day before, I let them set up to a certain extent and then I put them in a vacuum container so I can seal them really nice and tightly so they don't dry out too much. 
Okay, so let's finish off the soaps then. So for the leaf tip, you want to hold it up so it looks like a beak. So basically the flat bit should be vertical and the little cutout bit, that should be vertical as well. That will give you the leaf shape. And as you put it on the soap, you want to squeeze and sort of push the tip down to the soap so that the piping sticks and then just gradually lessen the pressure on the bag as you pull the leaf tip away. Now I have literally just cut these soaps but you could if you'd maybe cut your soaps a little bit earlier or just for a bit of peace of mind. There's no problem with spraying your soaps with a little bit of distilled water I'd recommend if you're going to use water um, or even some rubbing alcohol um, would be fine just something just to moisten them off again um, but as I said if you've got freshly cut soaps like I have that shouldn't be necessary so I'm just going to carry on and do these for the rest of the soaps I'm not going to um, make you sit through the piping of all of the rest of the soaps we'll have a look at a couple of them and then we'll look at the finished soaps <laughs> And then here are some final pictures of the soap. I hope you like the soap and that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, then why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!